How's it going everybody? Today we are looking at a very interesting and unique antenna, the Dually. This is a 49 to 1 on on BNC end fed half wave transformer with a 9 to 1 on the back end, also BNC. And there's two connection points for both with a counterpoise connection if you want to run that, which we might do. I haven't decided to completely. But what I also did in parallel was I took a bunch of braided, I don't know if this is copper clad or fully copper fishing line. It's pretty strong stuff. I got it off of Amazon. It's really cheap. And I threw it on a clothes line winder for like camping. There's like 120 feet on here. This is way, way too much. I did some quick math. Um, also went to a website. I'll post the link in the video description. If you're going to run a random wire uh, and you want relatively okay capability on, say, 80 meters, which is going to be like the lowest band we want to operate on, we're going to aim for about 52.5 feet of cable or wire. But realistically, we're really just going to use this on 40 and higher, up through 10 meters. And then for end-fed half wave on 40 meters for about the wire I'm using, we want about 65.21 feet of wire. So I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to cut it to the long side, probably about 70, 75 feet of wire so that I can adjust it as I need to. And then we'll add some heat shrink tubing along the mark point so that we know where we're at. Got my 100 foot tape here. Hard to do uh, long wire antenna setups if you don't have a really long tape measure. All right, and then let's take these and walk it out. 65 feet. Now, this wire is an exercise. It's pretty cheap. It kinks pretty easily. Otherwise, it won't last for very long. That's eh, about 75 feet. Pull this all tight. We're at the longest length right now, which I believe is the NFET halfway for 40 meters. That's 62-ish meters. Remember, I've got 75 meters of wire, so I'm going to adjust it by shortening it to get the space of the resonance of the antenna when you in use right where we want it. If you ever want to play around with these, I would recommend drilling a hole right here because you got a hole on the other side. And that way you can pass it through and uh, wrap it up a little bit better. I'm just going to do a couple of twists. We're coming up on the first paint mark here. Oop. Gotta hold on to it, it'll get loose. And then for tension, you just take this and wrap it one, two, three times, and it will stop. Now that we got the length of wire laid out, we're gonna go ahead and touch the, to the feed point of where the antenna's at and hoist up the mast. 49 to 1 first. We're going to hook this into place. Okay. Then we're going to add a bit of strain relief in the form of this loop. Caught that. <laughs> and then on the other side, I have a terminal connection for our flugelness. Messy and Poloni coax, the finest coax for all your Parks on the Air adventures. Link is in the video description. If you're curious, there is a discount code. And yes, go with the POTA 6. It's perfect size, perfect color, and amazing connectors. Look at that. Make sure you're on the 49 to 1 side of the BNC connector. There are two. Don't get it wrong. See, I almost got it wrong right there. All right, it's just an overhand loop. I go over the stake, and then on the other end, I'm gonna tie a um, taut line hitch. <clears throat> now, I wouldn't mess with that, the line as much yet, because we still have to check the resonance for the end-fed half wave. We're gonna do that right now, and we're gonna check our weights as well on our mass stand so that we're not gonna do anything dangerous. Gonna make sure we don't let this thing fall over. Ah, oh, no, I got it right. I already did it right, it's right there. It's all good. Threw the weights down. Now, something I like to do is attach streamers so that people don't trip on the wire, particularly as it comes down below the head point. So just go to kind of where a head and adult head would be so they don't trip. All 
while it's a really quiet day at the park, I'm not trying to risk it at all. So I don't expect to have nailed the tuning on the end fed right off the bat like that with the length. So that means we gotta check it. I am using a stick pro, 40 meters. Looks like we're not far off. Can you see that? Excellent. It is a little long, so we're going to shorten it a touch. So that's about perfect for what we're gonna be doing, which is whisper testing. Yep, right in there. Although it's a little long on 20. So uh, let's go up the line here a little bit. A little short on 15, and it's quite pretty on 10 meters at a 1.04 to 1 SWR. So we're, we're gonna run with this. It's kind of a sweet spot between the bands of operation. Let's get Whisper set up on my 705 and do a couple of tests on each band. Now, a couple of things to note with the testing here is that this antenna on NFED Halfwave is only gonna go down to 40 meters. It's only gonna be effective there and up to 10 meters. But when you run a tuner, you'll be able to go all the way down to 80, possibly even 160, although 80 and 160 will be less effective. That's my point of view, but anyway, let's do some whisper testing. Okay, we just completed the NFED half wave test. I'm gonna bring this down, switch over to the random wire. While I do that, let's talk about the findings. Good news, everybody. The NFED Halfway performed quite well with a maximum range of 8,162 miles to VK5 ARG. Interestingly enough, though, 283 stations picked me up with an average SNR of negative 10 and an average range of 1,400 miles. Pretty good. Oh, I can say the transformer's a little warm. Not that hot, but a little warm. Now, tests like this are sometimes difficult because when I switch antennas over like I am right now for the 9 to 1 un, -un the atmospheric conditions are going to change. And because of that, we're going to get slightly different numbers and things are not 100% accurate, but it's a close benchmark enough to get an understanding of how these two antennas perform, at least from a transmit point of view. Okay, that was it. We did a quick adjustment. We switched to the random wire, but this is the only downside well, there's a couple more I'll talk about at the end of the video, and that's you're gonna need an antenna tuner to make it work. So I'm gonna attach an antenna tuner now to my 705 and we're gonna tune it up. Well, there you have it. The same long distance station, VK5 ARG picked us up. 242 stations heard us, and the average range was 1,316 miles with an average SNR of negative 11, which is slightly below that. So a lower negative number or higher negative number, depending on how you look at it. Uh, negative 10 is better than a negative 11 in this case, is which we got with the NFED half wave, which is really not that big a deal. When stacked up against each other, what does it tell us? Well, it tells us that we got an average 100 miles longer in the NFED half wave. We got a few more stations to the order of about 40 and slightly better SNR, but all things being equal, they functioned very similarly. So the question you have to ask is if you want to get many, many bands of operation in the forms of 80 meters, 40, 20, 17, 30, you, you name it, then the random wire might be the way to go, but you have to always make sure you have your antenna tuner with you. And most base station radios generally won't tune a random wire. You need something closer to a 10 to one matching antenna tuner versus a three to one, which is gonna be what you see in a lot of 100 watt base stations. But many QRP radios will be able to tune a random wire like an Ellacraft KX2 or KX3, Shagu G90, Shagu 6200. Those guys will generally handle the job. You are there. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Ending in Alpha Zulu, let's give it a try. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Okay, I think I got Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. QSL? QSL, QSL, QSL. Have you at a 5555 into Cerritos, California? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. 
QSL, 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 you are a 5-5, 55, 5, 55, 5, 5, 5, 5 into California. 5-5, five, five, California. I got to give you like a 3-1, three, 3-1, one, three, one, Arizona. Copy, copy, 7-3, seven, 7-3. Three, seven, three. 73, thanks. It's hunting season. Uh, winter is, you can feel it up in the mountains a little bit. The snow, we've had some snowfall uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, next time we talk, I'll probably be buried under uh, three feet of snow here. Uh, what's your setup there, Grady? What you running? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. We had you, uh, Kilo uh, India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, QSL, QSL, this is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. We have you 5555 into Southern California. Outstanding. Thank you so much for the contact. We have you at a good 5-8 uh, here in Central California. Uh, QSL? Copy, copy the 5-8. Perfect. Thank you for taking the uh, time to hunt us down. And uh, we do have a second operator if you have a minute. I absolutely do. Go for it. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is Kilo November 6, Zulu Golf Echo. Uh, we got you at 5 5 and Park US 0210 QSL. Uh, copy that, copy that. Yeah, you, you came all the way up to 5858 five, eight on that one into Southern California inside Cerritos, California. Cerritos. Thank you for the contact and activating 73. 73, thank you for having this. So I'm shooting my wrap up on this video before actually looking at the numbers here. I expect that the numbers are gonna be pretty equal to each other. The NFED half wave could be longer, the random wire could be longer. There are really two points of interest, I think, that everyone should understand about random wire antennas and NFEDs. With a random wire, you're gonna need a tuner and the length of the wire is actually very important. There's no random in a random wire. What we're looking for in a wire length is one that is not resonant on any of the bands that we're going to operate on. And then the nine to one un, -un will bring that impedance down that we can use a tuner to make it work with the radio. Now, the random wire with a tuner, so you gotta make sure you have a tuner with you. For you that have a radio that has a built-in tuner, random wire might be a good option for you. You get multiple bands, pretty much all the bands. Now, going back to the length of the wire, that means that if you have a very short wire, you will resonate on things like 80 meters and 160 meters, but it's not going to be very efficient and it's not going to be very effective. You still need a very long piece of wire to be effective on bands like 80 meters and lower. Now, for me personally, I don't really use 9 to 1 on uns. My first HF Summits on the Air antenna was actually a 9 to 1 on un and to this day, it's the only antenna that I got an RF burn from, even at QRP levels. It was really light. It wasn't a big deal. I was very new to amateur radio at the time. I didn't fully understand the concept of what a non-resonant antenna versus a resonant antenna was. I went with the 9 to 1 un, un random wire because I thought, hey, how cool it would be to have multiple bands of operation. And in that sense, yeah, the utility is great. When it's working, it works. Now, for the 49 to 1 un, un the, the NFED half wave, you have limited bands of operation. You have 40 meters, 20, 15, and 10. Those are all harmonics of each other. And generally, you're going to have a length of wire about 65 feet or so to go from 40 meters all the way up to 10. Now, the reality is, is that those bands lie in spaces where one length of wire is not going to be a perfect tune on every frequency. You're going to have to adjust them somewhat or add trap of some kind to help smooth it out. I would encourage you to go watch a lot of YouTube videos on all the differences between 49 to 1 ununs and tuning them to be on specific bands. There are a myriad of ways of doing it. K6ARK in particular has a really good video on a tuned trap that he has, which makes it really effective. You can also link these, a linked piece of wire to extend it out so you can have a shorter 20 meter NFED half wave or a 40 meter NFED half wave and you can go about it like that as well. For me personally, I generally go with resonant and often NFED half waves when I'm doing parks on the air or summits on the air because they're just easy. You just throw an antenna over something, a tree or a fiberglass telescopic mast and you get to work. So with the dually, Totally works, totally functional. It's actually not that much bigger than carrying a regular like 100 watt NFED half wave around a random wire. But I'm curious of why you would need both. 
do you want just one transformer and potentially to switch between radios? If that's the case, then yeah, great, go for it. It's well made, it's good product. I like the holes on the side. I like that they went with this PCB mounting structure. I think that's really cool. It's a novel concept. I think it's worth a look. I'll post the link to the dually in the video description if you're interested in checking it out. I am not affiliated with this antenna at all, but it was sent to me to take a look at, and I really do appreciate that. Thanks everybody for watching. If you have questions, please post them below, but the best way to get your questions answered is to join the Ham Radio Crash Course Discord. We have people on there 24 seven answering all sorts of amateur radio questions, and we appreciate you taking a look. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ, 73. Big flex, big flex.